right, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we are doing the what's next on David Benavidez, the undefeated WBC interim super middleweight champion and former two-time world champion as he um, got the biggest win of his career collectively, defeating Demetrius Andre on November 25th, Showtime pay-per-view in the main event by a sixth round TKO when Andre retired in his corner. Now, before we get into that, if you could smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. So, you know, Andre, um, I mean, this win was very significant because it was basically the two guys that are claiming that Canelo's ducking them, going at it, and doing basically what Canelo told them to do and fight each other if they really want to incur in a fight with him. And David went out there and just blasted David Benavidez. I mean, Demetrius Andre. Andre, Andre fought hard. It was a good fight, you know. Um, but, you know, for, for a few rounds there. But then David's size, though, is just so, it's so significant how big he is. And he just presses and presses. And, um, you know, it, it just, you know, he, he did well. He outworked. Um, Andre had stopped him. You know, uh, Andre, you could tell, was just beat up and hurt. And um, he ended up uh, retire, you know, re quitting in his corner. Um, but I, I can't knock him. I mean, you're, you're in there facing a guy that is nine years younger than you and um, also way bigger uh, on the night of the fight, you know, which I'm not knocking David for that. I'm just saying it's a fact. You know, the guy was just, he's, he's so much naturally bigger and and it just it played it played um, a, ma a major role in why the beatdown was as bad as it was. So um, congratulations to to um, to ben Benavidez. And now the big question is what's next for him? Well, let's get the Canelo uh, talk out of the way. Um, obviously, uh, you know. That, that fight should be next. I mean, it, uh, but I don't think it's going to happen exactly next. I honestly believe Canelo is going to want them to have uh, prelude fights, you know, like uh, get, you, you know, uh, to build the fight up. He's going to want them to have pre fights in May, and then they probably lock up in September, is what it's looking like. Um, so, I. If you're asking point blank, do I think David's going to get the fight with Canelo in May? I don't believe so. I still think it's a possibility. But I really think Canelo's going to want to take a softer touch. David will probably do the same thing. Maybe David can get on the undercard of Canelo and and everything, and, and they can do that. that I think that would be good. But um, we'll see what happens um, with, with, with that situation. Now, before we look at the rest of the top ten, I want to talk about Jamal Charlo. Personally, if I had to pick right now, gun to my head, I'd say Canelo's probably going to fight Charlo in May. That's just my opinion. Um, Charlo's got a bigger name than Munguia. I think Munguia could end up losing uh, anyways to uh, to um, uh, John Ryder, and that would take him off the table. Um, and I think that would guarantee a Charlo fight. And Bud Crawford, they, they rumored, is the third option. Is, is another option, but I don't believe that fight's going to happen because I think Bud's going to fight Errol Spence in the first half of the year in a rematch. So, a Charlo fight, I don't think it's going to happen unless Canelo ends up deciding on Munguia or Crawford. Then I think that opens the door for them, but honestly I don't think uh, I don't think Charlo will want to fight Benavidez. I just don't see that happening. Um, but, it, you know, it's not to say it can't happen. I'm just saying I don't think Charlo wants that fight. Then there's Caleb Plant in a rematch. No no point in that. Benavidez dominated Plant uh, earlier in the year. No reason for that. Uh, John Ryder. Um, if Canelo chooses Charlo and say John Ryder were to upset, um, were to upset uh, Jaime Maguia, which I don't think that'd be a major upset to be honest, uh, and David fucking and, and David David might look at that and be like, hey, you know, Canelo couldn't knock him out. I wanna I wanna fight John Ryder and knock him out. So I think 
the possibility is there for John Ryder, but Ryder would have to beat Munguia. Um, Demetrius Andre in a rematch? No, there's no sense in that. He dominated him. Jaime Munguia. Well, if Canelo went with Charlo and Golden Boy was down to work with the PBC and have Benavides and Munguia, because essentially you could you could build that fight as a huge Mexican fight right there, and the winner gets Canelo in September. That could be the bill of that right there. So, I I mean, I think it's possible if Golden Boy's willing to work with the PBC and make the fight happen. I do think it would be possible. But I don't know, to be honest. I really don't. Uh, then Sergey Derevinchenko. I really believe that this one is a possibility, for sure, because Derevinchenko fought Manguia tough and, and walked away with a close, controversial loss. And Derevinchenko's been beaten before. And it, it would be a softer touch type opponent for Benavides. He'd be a heavy favorite, but Derry Vinchenko would be billed as a legitimate contender going in against David. So, you know, and maybe David could be the first guy that knocks Derry Vinchenko out. You know, that that's what he could bill it as. Is this guy's lost before, but he's never been knocked out. I'm gonna be the first guy to knock him out. You know? So I I think I think Derry Vinchenko is is a highly uh, regarded possibility right there. Then there's da uh, da David Morrell Jr., the WBA regular champion. I mean, I would love to see this fight, and the fight almost came to fruition before Andre became available for David, but I really do think it's a high-risk fight for him. Um, although he would lock up mandatory at two belts then, and Canelo would likely have to give up two belts instead of one if he were to avoid David. Um, but I don't think David really cares about that because I think David wants to get Canelo out of the way, beat him, or even if he loses, and then move up to 175. That's what I think David's focused on. So I, I just don't think he's after where he's where he's at now, David. I think David Morrell right now is a high risk, low reward fight for him. Then there's Vladimir Shishkin, another guy that I think is very possible, and David again can force Canelo from two governing bodies into a mandatory fight and Shishkin is with the PBC so David would fight Shishkin and it'd be looked at as a softer touch but he is undefeated he beat Jose Ustadegui last year and I think if David beats Shishkin then that would um, put David his best foot forward towards um, towards a showdown with um, with Canelo, you know, it'd be like I said, it'd be a, a, a more of a softer touch opponent for for David, and he can um, he can you know uh, lock up mandatory to two belts, not just one. So that's my opinion on uh, on Shishkin, and then Edgar Berlanga. Um, it's not to say there wouldn't be interest here, but I don't think it's going to happen. Berlanga's with Matrim and Eddie Hearn. I think I think he wants to build Berlanga up before he throws him into into a fight against a guy like David. I think David is just a little too good, a little too dangerous for Berlanga right now. And 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 you'd be like feeding, you know, feeding uh, feeding David uh, a guy who gets hit and and everything. And you know, I think David would be interested in the fight, but I don't know, and I don't think Berlanga would be interested in this fight. So that's it um if you're asking me who do i think david's gonna fight it again it, it's dependent on who canelo fights i would favor canelo fighting charlo in may and then i think david will go after um either the winner of munguia and Ryder, or i think gary vinchenko vladimir shishkin are are right there as well and then the other the other option that I think is could that I do think he would be interested in, even though I think it's high risk, low reward, is David Morrell Jr. But we'll see what goes down. I'm really hoping I don't really care who he fights as long as it leads to Canelo in September. Or I hope Canelo fights him in September. One or the other. But 2024, Canelo versus David Benavides has to happen. And that's it. That's what I got. That's my what's next on the undefeated WBC interim super middleweight champion and former two-time world champion David Benavidez following his sixth round TKO victory over 
Demetrius Andre as he remained undefeated. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.